So we're back to part two of repairing the Testo 570. From video number one, when you seen the corrosion that was caused by the batteries, and I told you I was going to use reverse osmosis water to clean it, I have successfully cleaned it off. You see the battery acid stains and all the flaky corrosion is off of uh, the plate. So we will assemble this and see what we got. I am anxious. All caused by buying cheap batteries on the weekend in an emergency, using it for a job last minute, and then forgetting to take the cheap batteries out. And they uh, corroded and leaked. Okay, and these little buttons, the little round circles you see right here, there's actually a conductive material on there that on the round circles that you see on the pad, there's actually two halves and all you're doing is like a light switch. You're just touching two sides and completing a circuit. That's how those touch pads work. So if you ever spill a soda pop on them and it gets under there and it gets all gummy and your buttons stop working, Usually you could just take this apart and clean it off with some reverse osmosis water or some 99% alcohol. Let's see where we're at. Get down there. there we go. Bingo. We got a light coming up. It works. We have display. So detecting sensors, sometimes you would have a sensor here for the high side temperature. You'd have a sensor that goes in here for low side temperature on your suction and your uh, liquid line. You have a sensor here. This one goes to like oil pressure on your big crankcase for your big commercial compressors and stuff like that. So we have a good um, working display now. Now, I would be able to send this in, but while taking it apart, I discovered one more problem. And the problem I discovered is showing up. It's going to be really hard to see, but at the tip of my chopstick, if you see these. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Those twelve little solder pads right there. So if I zoom in, see if I could do this with my finger without. And so not that set, not that set, but right there, and then go down one. So just at the right just below my pointer right there, the one I just covered up and, and then moved back so you can see it, and then the second pair right there. Those four take one component that needs to be soldered on. And that one component, component was an inductor that fell off. And where are we, right? That little tiny component right there. And that little tiny component, compared to a grain of rice, there's, there's a grain of rice. That's a short grain rice. That's the small type of rice. And that makes the small type of rice look large. So I'll take that off. Take my inductor off. So surface mount components, SMDs. This circuit board is all SMDs. A little more tricky than what I usually do. I usually make up and design and build something like this. And what I use is I use through hole components. And for through hole components are the old fashioned ones we used to use years ago. 
are like this, where you have the wires on your transistors, your MOSFETs, your JFETs, your... These are all capacitors, capacitors. These are little pots, more resistors. And then I just solder them down on the bottom side and they just, they call through hole cause there's a hole and you have a wire that goes through and you saw it. So you call it through hole. And coming back to something like this is SMD and SMD sounds as surface mount device. And so everything you see right there is on here. These are capacitors. Some of these smaller ones down in here are capacitors. And then we have uh, what fell off was an inductor. And then you have these little diodes right here. Uh, these, these are color coded. These are capacitors, but these are called um, tantalum capacitors. And so even this big chip, I can actually solder this off now. So if I wanted to solder this off, or if I want to put my piece back on, I can use my hot plate. Sorry about being so tricky with the camera. But you would put this flat on this plate, and you'd have to get the flat part where it goes down. I would have to solder out these protrusions right here, so this is now flat. Lay it down here, turn it on, and heat it up to the part 400, 500 Celsius so I could melt my solder. And I would lay my solder paste right in the connection area where I want it on the pads. And you have to dispense it with a very small syringe tip and lay my inductor on top of it and put it up here until it melts. My second alternative to repairing this would be to use hot air. So here's my hot air station. You would not use one of these for the small surface mounts. This is out of the question. These are too big and bulky. Doesn't work that great. Bigger surface mount, you could do bigger surface mount. The really small stuff, use hot air. So this device blows out hot air 400, 500, 600 degrees Celsius. And you would use that with a little nozzle tip to give you a pinpoint hot air. And you would lay your component on there and then use your hot air and you can use some krypton or krapton kapton tape and you could put tape it's a heat resistant tape around your area to protect everything else so nothing gets burnt and leave your area and you just keep waving your heat back and forth and then all of a sudden the solder will liquefy and turn into a liquid and your component will just kind of self level itself and put itself in place and fall down you turn off the heat and it's soldered to the table or to the your circuit board and in this case that little component right there if I don't do that I would have to pay that to get another one and if you know depending where you live what state or what country you might be paying anywhere from 10% to 50% tax in some countries and up to 50% to import it as a duty tax going into some countries. And why would you wanna throw this away and make it a paperweight when you could solder that back on? You cleaned up your board and you get it up and running and get it serviced and repaired. So this is what I found in part two. Uh, I'll make a part three when I finish and I put this inductor back on and if you did look at this inductor You would see there's four soldering points on this If it will focus come here, focus And I don't think it's gonna focus But there's actually four pads on there It's not two pads. It's four and they're about the size, smaller than uh, the ball bearing in a big pan. There you go, you almost could see it, okay. One, two, three, four. You could see at all four corners. Those need to be soldered down. And the solder cannot bridge and short it out. That's the other problem. So this is gonna take me some work. 
Uh, we'll get back in video number three and see if I'm successful at getting this back. This is getting smaller than I usually work with. So this is pushing my size limit. Uh, my eyes can no longer see this. I have to wear the magnifying glasses that go over each eye that you put around your head that you see jewelers who carve diamonds and shape diamonds. Um, coming up next, number three. And see you on the next video. Hopefully this is ready to be shipped off. Right there. Testo, 570. Will it be trash or will it be saved?